up, what's up, what's up? Of course, it's your boy Richie Rich, man, at Consumer Appliance Report. You already know, man, we review appliances. Today, of course, we're going to focus on a Thermador, which is a high end appliance, professional 30 inch built in double electric wall oven. And yes, it's going to cost you about 10 stacks. It's going to cost you some bread, man. So let's get to this video. Of course, you know, this is my favorite part, the functions and the features, man. So we're going to dive into the functions and features in this portion of the video. And of course, we're going to break this thing down and give you our overall review to let you know exactly how we feel about this appliance. If you have any questions, don't forget, man, shoot me a, a notification in the inbox of this video, or you can email us at car21136 at gmail.com. All right, so let's get into this real quick, man, functions and features. All right, so from just looking at this appliance, man, again, it's a Thermador built-in oven. You can get it in so many different ways. You can get a single oven, you can get a double wall oven. Um, so we're gonna talk about just the double wall oven. So you can see just some of the features that you see here. Stainless steel, talked about is about uh, $10,000 from just from the looks of it. Um, you have an upper oven and a single oven as well. It has some amazing fe amazing features. It is a smart appliance as well. So you're gonna, we're gonna talk about that and talk about a lot of the functions and features. This gives you a signature blue knobs, right? On this particular appliance, depending on what it is that you want. You can get the blue knobs. I think that's pretty different. Um, I've seen other appliances like Wolf that might give you a red knob or something like that, but I think that's unique to a lot of appliances, so we really like that. Um, you have your control panel, right? Where you turn the bake, bro, we're gonna get into that and dive into the owner's menu as well. So we're just gonna show you a little bit of the actual frame and how it looks, some of the features. I'm just gonna pause it right there, dive into the owner's menu, man. So let's get into this real quick. Again, Thermador. Um, professional all right so this is the model number here but of course when you get your appliance write down the model number we always instruct you to um, check out the table of contents man read the owner's manual dive into the joint um, if you don't want to check out our videos we help you out tremendously don't forget safety definitions right warnings cautions notices um, and, and notes as well important safety instructions always want to make sure you should read those so you get accustomed to the appliance any fire safety warnings that you want to read do that as well all right so let's dive into this joint man i'm just going to scroll through all this and just jump into this joint all right all right let's talk about accessories all right Sex accessories all right, so this particular oven, again, you get a rotisserie rack. It says use this accessory when using a rotisserie mold. See rotisserie under conventional oven operation chapter for additional information. Do not clean in the self-clean oven. All right, so that's one of the things that you want to notice with this particular rotisserie rack. You have your traditional racks. You got a wire rack. You got a telescopic rack. <clears throat> that's a little bit different as well. Um, some clean, some special accessories not included. You got a self cleaning rack with three racks available, right? So you have those. You have your broil pan and grid, and you also have your meat probe, single meat probe, and your multi point meat probe. All right, so you can actually do that as well. All right, so let's let this rock. So let's dive into this oven real quick. Getting to know the appliance. All right, oven overview. You can see some of the stuff that you have. Convection system. Yes, and it is a convection oven as well. Accessory racks. We just talked about that. Door hinges, gasket, meat probes, um, socket, broil element, oven vents, and rotisserie socket. You have your bottom, right? The bottom oven. The bottom oven conceals the lower heating element. As a result, the element is protected from damage and spills. And it's supposed to help your oven kick cook a lot a lot more efficiently because you're heating up the lower portion of the oven. Um, so that's um, gonna help with that, all right? Um, control panel display, upper cavity, lower cavity, let's go into that. So let's go into some of the oven cavity features. All right, let's talk about oven vents, all right? The oven vent is located along the top and bottom of the unit. So these are certain things that you wanna pay attention to because through the oven vents, that's where all the heat is and you can get burned. It's one of the hottest places on the ovens. So you just wanna be careful with that. Warm air, warm air may be released from the vent before, during and after cooking. It is normal to see steam escaping from the vent and condensation may collect. So you just wanna be careful with that. You wanna make sure you wipe it up properly and clean it up as well because you never know what can happen. It can stain it, it can create rust because condensation is nothing but water. All right, so you wanna be careful with that. Cooling fans, all right? The cooling fan rubs base, 
runs based on the oven temperature. All right, so warm air may be felt as it releases from the oven vents while the vent the fan operates. The fan may be also the fan may also operate after the oven is off. And that's one of the benefits of certain ovens. It's too hot on the inside, so it's a cooling fan. It cools down the appliance, and you still might hear the fan on. Convection fan. One of the best ways to cook is through convection because the convection fan operates during all convection modes. When the oven is operated in the convection mode, the fan turns off automatically um, when the door is open. All right, so as soon as you open door, fan shuts off, pretty simple. Oven lights, you already know those about those appliances. These are not traditional oven lights, so you wanna think about that as well. When you're dealing with halogen lights, you gotta be careful putting those in. You also wanna make sure um, that you don't touch the light bulb. It's, for some reason, the resistance in your hand affects the light bulb and could cause it to uh, damage the light bulbs and not work properly. So you just wanna get like a paper towel or something like that, but if you're not familiar with it, check out this video, check out the owner's manual, all this stuff is gonna be downloaded so you'll be able to get that. All right, control panel. Let's look at the control panel. All right, some of the features that it has here. Um, your clean molds, convection board, bro, pizza, right? Rotisserie, we talked about there. Moors, you got your remote start. Again, this is a smart appliance. Um, bake, convection bake, true convection. Um, you have your self-clean with number three is your temperature selector. Number two, your function selector. And of course, number one is your full touch color display. All right, it is touch screen. So we're gonna show you that as well inside this video. All right, so just bear with us. Um, you have your touch buttons. All right, you have your function selector, right? Um, one is for the upper, one is for the lower. So you wanna think about that as well, right? Um, you have your cleans, convection, pizza, all the same options on the right that it is on the left. Um, again, you have your temperature selector as well. Um, different um, touch buttons, these are sensors. Uh, under the touch buttons, press on the words of the button, of the touch buttons to select a function. So you're gonna see that in the video when we get to that point. Pretty, you know, pretty easy to touch it. You just wanna be careful. Um, don't you wanna make sure that your hand is not wet? You wanna make sure it's dry. Um, you wanna be careful cleaning it as well. That's another option, another issue that does happen when you're cleaning out these appliances. They can get damaged from using a lot of moisture and rubbing across the screen. It's just like your cell phone. So you just wanna be careful when you're doing that or your laptop or anything else that's sensitive to the touch. All right, touch button. You got your light, timer, uh, settings, fast preheat, info, and lock. All right, so, and here it is when we're talking about the touch screen. So I'm just gonna go back into the video real quick. Let that rock so we can see some of that stuff there um, as we drive into this joint, man, so that you can actually see it. Uh, again, there's the buttons there. You see the touch screen across everything there. Rotisserie, convection, um, dehydrate, max brawl, roast, speed convection. All right, so I'm just going to stop it there because we're going to dive into some of this stuff so that you can actually see what we're talking about. All right, full touch color display. All right, basic way of operating display. To select a feature setting, touch the desired area on the display. All right, pretty simple. Just swipe across the screen. It will follow your fingers as well. All right, pretty easy. The touch screen also supports swiping to move to the left or right through the various settings. All right, so you can do either one. You can check that out as well. It says, in some instance, you have further options to navigate through the menu. For double ovens, touch the symbol to select the upper oven cavity, touch the lower symbol to select the lower oven cavity. So you have one for upper, you have one for lower, you just gotta press one of those two. It says the setting you make afterwards will only affect the oven cavity you have selected. All right, so some options allow returning to the prior screen by touching the back symbol. You can see that right there, all right, to go back. Some, sim some operations allow confirmation by touching the symbol. All right, so you can touch it here to let you know it's like an enter button. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, heating modes, right? So there's some of the stuff that we're gonna go into when we talk about the cavity inside of the oven so we can let the video rock a little bit so that you'll be able to see this joint, right? So this is the oven uh, door handles. Door handles are pretty sturdy. They better be for $10,000, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, so this is inside the oven cavity, depending on the size. This one is four point cubic feet capacity. Um, so we're just gonna open it up so you can actually see some of the awesome features that it has with the rack, right? That's the telescopic rack that we talked about earlier, right? So you can actually see that. 
Then you have your traditional racks and all that types of stuff. So this on the inside of the oven. So I'm just pause it there so you can see the inside of that. And we just check the rest of this thing out. All right, heating modes, right? You have your true convection. All right, temperature Fahrenheit Celsius 150 to 525, 65 to 275. All right, so let's dive into this a little bit where it says for baking. All right, so let's adjust this a little bit. It says for baking and cooking small food items, one or more, uh, one or more racks. It says the fan distributes the heat from the ring heating element in the back panel evenly around the oven cavity. And that's like I said, that's one of the great things about the true convection, the fan that circulates the heat around the heating element. As long as the heat is circulating inside the oven, man, like I said, it's going to allow your stuff to cook a lot evenly. Um, it says convection bake. It says used for large baked items and breads on one or two racks, also suitable for side dishes and casseroles. All right, heat is emitted from above and below while the the fan distributes the heat evenly around the oven cavity. All right, bake. So let's look at that. 500 and, and 150, 150 to 525 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 to 275. It says for traditional baking and roasting on one level, especially suitable for cakes and multi, multi, multiple racks, heat is admitted evenly from the top and bottom. Convection roast, you see the temperatures there, roasting off poultry, larger pieces of meat, and vegetables. All right, the heat is admitted from above and below while the fan distributes heat evenly around the oven cavity. All right, so that's where it is. Both the bake and the broil comes on, and you also have the convection fan, so you're getting a lot of heat. Remote start. All right, so that's one of the features that we have there, like we talked about on this appliance. It's a smart appliance for starting the oven operating operation using your mobile device. Allows for change to be made in current operation or starting a new operation. Like I said, you've seen this a lot in the new appliances, man. These AIs and these smart appliances, they're going to cost you a lot of money. But this is the way that we live in, man. This is the world that we live in. Everyone wants it quick, fast, and in a hurry. Wanted to be able to, you know, you'd be sitting in the house watching a movie and you can check your temperatures on your phone so you don't have to run in the kitchen every time. I think that's pretty slick, but we just got to be careful of that, as I always instruct you. Rotisserie. For roasting poultry and large pieces of meat, food is slowly turned on a square. Uses heat radiant from the upper element. You got your pizza section. Again, Loving pizza, man. Nothing as good as a pepper. I would say pepperoni pizza is pretty good, but I go with grilled chicken on it and bacon. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, for preparing pizza fresh or frozen, heat is emitted from above and below. So the fan distributes the heat evenly around the oven cavity. So it's almost similar to the convection roast. So uh, even though they label, label it pizza, again, same, some of the same features. Brawl, of course, brawling flat items such as steaks or hamburgers for making toast. And for making toast and for cooking or uh, gratin. Hmm. All right, the whole area under the broil heating element becomes hot. Convection broil, you have your cleaning modes as well for selecting available cleaning modes. Um, we talk about speed convection for frozen convenience foods. Heat is emitted from top and bottom while the fan circulates hot air around the food. All right, so. If your feed food is frozen for convenience all right warm for keeping cooked food warm proof is for yeast dough and sourdough dough will rise considerably more quicker quickly than at room temperature dehydrate right for drying herbs fruits and vegetables uh, slow roast for gentle slow cooking of seared tender pieces of meat and overwear without a lid max convection bro all right so for thick Tender cuts of meat, poultry, and fish uses the larger broil element with the convection fan to allow for more food to cook at one time. Max broil for cooking thin, tender cuts of meat, poultry, and fish uses the larger broil element to allow cooking more food at one time. Roast for roasting poultry or meats. The heat is emitted from above and below. Sabbath, which says will appear in heating modes if, en if enabled in settings. All right, it says warm mode is, in is found in rotisserie mode, now position for lower oven. All right, then this is your, how you're supposed to position, position your cakes. Two cakes, 
Rack level number four. These are some of the things that we always discuss inside your oven. You have different rack levels that you can use. Pan placement is really key when you're baking. I know some of us have been baking forever. You know how to bake. You've been doing it just this, this way and that way. But when you get these new ovens, it's going to have to change a little bit. You might have to change your pots. All right, if you have old pots in a new oven, sometimes they might not work together. You have to get acclimated to the temperatures um, to the new oven, right? It might not be as your older oven was. And in fact, it's supposed to be more accurate. So you want to be able to tailor your cooking and adjust to the new oven that you have. All right, um, oven rack baking for best results when baking layer cakes on one rack. Use bake mode. Place the cakes on rack four in the oven as shown below. Multiple racks baking the cakes. All right, that's something that we've talked about there as well. Four cakes rack placement three and five. All right, so pre uh, preheat reminders and stuff like that. Multiple rack four layer cakes at the same time. Stagger pack pans on top racks on that one pan is one, not directly above the other. So that's one of the things that you want to look at. Don't stack them on, uh, underneath each other um, like that as well. So I'm kind of glad I read that. Preheat reminders, the lower element is hidden under the oven bottom. It is normal that the preheat time is different than your previous oven that had an exposed element on the bottom. All right, so these are the things that you want to look at. Preheating is not necessary for meats, poultry, casserole, and speed convection mode. Preheat time will be longer when the electrical supply to your house is less than 240 volts. So you want to think about that as well. Make sure that you have the right breaker for an electric oven. I would say for an electric oven, no less than 40. All right, 40 amp breaker on up, 40, 50, even sometimes 60 just to be safe. All right, increasing the oven temperature will require a longer preheat time. For example, the preheat time for 425 is longer than the preheat time for 350. When broiling, preheat the oven three to four minutes do not preheat for more than five minutes. All right, and then it gives you best results. So these are some of the things that you can look at in baking pans and dishes. All right, like I said before, we talk about this. It's extremely important. So you'll be able to see that. I'm just let it sit so you guys can be able to read that as well. Just take your time checking it out as we go through this owner's manual, preheating the oven, right? So there's certain things. This is preheat the oven when using the bake, convection, bake, true convection, pizza, broil, convection, broil, and warm modes. Preheat is not required on certain option. Allow oven to preheat while preparing recipe ingredients for food items. Setting a higher temperature does not shorten preheat time. All right, so that's another thing that you need to highlight and know exactly what is going on. Condensation is normal for a certain amount of moisture to evaporate from the food during any cooking process. The amount depends on the moisture content of the food. The moisture may condense on any surface cooler than inside of the oven, such as the control panel. Alright, so before you use, a couple stuff that we can get into. So let's check out this joint real quick, man. See what we got here. So you'll be able to rock. Let's see some of this oven, man. Here you have your steamer as well. Right, that's your um, bucket or pan that you put in there. Every time you pull that out, your oven will notice or indicate on the, the on the control panel to let you know that you've removed that. All right, so um, it has a sensor in there to detect it. So that's what you use for steaming. All right, so let's keep rocking and rolling. Oven door glass. Make sure you keep that clean. One of the best ways to keep that clean is that you want to squirt it with Windex, of course. You can use a small razor blade to go across it while it's wet and there's moisture from the actual glass. Right? So you don't want to just clean it just to clean it and rub against it with the, the blade or whatever you're using or a small knife or blade. I normally go with a razor blade. And just squirt a lot of the, the Kleenex and go across it up and down and clean it. Best result, make your window looks pretty clean. All right, so this is the rotisserie, heavy-duty rotisserie, and that's what we talked about. So this is how it looks. You see the rotation. Man, when you're talking about an oven costing $10,000, um, it better have some $10,000 features in it. Um, this is your temperature probe here as well, or your meat probe. Um, that's something that we'll discuss in the owner's manual if we haven't already done so. But yeah, this is what we like about this oven, man. You can see that, and that's the rack, um, telescopic rack. This is what the actual rotisserie rack looks like. Right, so we're just gonna pause it there so you can see that. I think that looks amazing. You can also see the LED lights on the left and the right hand side, and you can see the meat probe right here that you gotta insert that meat probe indicator in, and then stick it in the meat. All right, so pretty dope. Really like it. Really dope. 
Uh, before first use, it says before using the appliance for the first time, appliance must be properly installed by a qualified technician before use. You already know this information, man. So get the right people to install it. That's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Not a lot of options there. Um, swipe left and right to select the required language. All right, so you have English, Espanol, and France, right? French. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jumapel, Richard. Ah, no, a little something, something. Um, initial use, it says as soon as the appliance is connected to the power supply, the first setting time of date appears on the display. Setting the time of day. These are certain things that you can do, right? Touch the button line, the time setting options are displayed. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to set this stuff, but you got to get used to it. Go into the settings and you will be able to set the time of day. Setting up the home connect. Like I said, it's a smart appliance, man, so you'll be able to connect that, connect to your Wi-Fi, um, touch home connect, touch start assistant, follow the instruction in the chapter um, on page 27. So these are some of the things that you can look at in the owner's manual while you're trying to figure out this appliance, man. So let's rock with it. Let's make it happen. All right, so let's see. We talked about the language, um, different options and settings that you can get into this appliance as well. So um, time of day, language, clock format. Signal volume, right? So you see that. Um, display brightness, dark mode, standby mode, convection, all that stuff. Sabbath mode, you can turn it on and off, so you want to be careful with that. Again, a lot of these Sabbath mode, man, are automatic. So once you select them, everything that needs to happen on the Sabbath mode does happen on its own. So it's not really much that you need to do as far as just selecting the Sabbath mode. You want to be careful in the demo mode if you turn that feature on. So you want to be careful with that. Factory setting, restore, you can do that. Customer service as well, you can do that. Um, general operation, high altitude baking when cooking at high altitude. Recipes and cooking times will vary. Um, not sure exactly when you'll need with that, but just in case if you have that problem or that issue, it'll help you. All right. Switching the appliance on and off. Set a heating mode with the function selector to switch the appliance on. To switch the appliance off, set the function selector and the temperature selector to the off position. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, temperature options. Your appliance will beep once you set time has elapsed. Timer option. Kitchen timer. Oven timer. End time. All right. So you have a lot of the older features inside this appliance that you can still use. And it has the traditional knobs as well. But nowadays, even though it has the knob-like feature, it's not necessarily just like a switch that's behind it. Sometimes it can be a switch, but it is a, it's in a control board format instead of your standard block switches that you normally would turn back in the day. All right, so that could be computerized as well. So, um, you know, it's not all, it's not old, you know what I mean? So, all right, let's rock and see what we got on this vid. All right, so like I said, you have different options to choose from there. Masterpiece, professional, right? These are different um, levels of Thermador, right? You see that microwave oven combo and all these good old stuff there as well. So you see see those options that they have. I'm just going to let that sit there, um, right? So you have the masterpiece. You have a microwave with the oven. Um, so many different options that you can choose from, man. So um, let's go back to the owner's manual real quick so we can get as much information as we possibly can. Um, this is how it looks when you're dealing with the timer, right? Setting the timer, oven timer, end time, all that stuff. True convection, right? So these are the options that you see there. Um, kitchen timer, all that good old stuff. So um, setting a heating mode, right? You got your true convection, you got your bake. But always remember the symbols for the upper and the lower, depending on which one you want to turn on, right? Um, so... Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Double oven, like I said, is compact with a lot. Um, activating and deactivating the appliance. Panel lock, you can always lock the panel. The panel, if you have issues where kids like pressing a lot of buttons and stuff like that. Um, auto convection conversion, this is a true convection and convection bake modes require a 25 degree Fahrenheit or 10, deg 10 degrees um, Celsius reduction in temperature. All right, so that's one of the things that you got to think about. Um, fast preheat. With fast preheat, you can shorten the preheat time required for some heating modes. And these are the modes that it work in. True convection, convection bake, bake, roast, and convection roast. Alright, temperature offset. This feature is useful in, if food is consistently either too brown or too light. The setting increase or decrease 
um, decreases the set oven temperature according to the chosen value. All right. And this is the symbol that you use here. The symbol appears on the display. Fast preheat. All right. So you want to be familiar with a lot of these symbols as you check out this video and this owner's manual. We talked about the meat probe. Right, this is where it is, how to do the meat probe, suitable heat modes, right? Depending on the model, your oven comes with a single point or multiple point meat probe. This means that the, the probe measures the temperature either in one or in three different areas of the food, ensuring the most accurate cooking results. So you, of course, you're sticking that in your meat and it's um, checking the temperature of the meat. All right, poultry, insert the meat probe, right? Um, as far as it will go into the thickest point in the breast, insert the meat probe into the poultry uh, crosswise or lengthwise depending on its structure. All right, inserting the meat probe into the food. This is before placing your food into the oven cavity. Insert the meat probe into the food. All right, here you go. They give you a picture. This is exactly how it's supposed to look. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. All right. Again, you can always... Pause it, take a look at this stuff, man, and get into it. Sabbath mode, we talked about it already. Within the Sabbath mode, a cooking time of up to 74 hours can be set. You can keep the food in the oven cavity warm without having a, to switch the oven on or off. All right, so you'd be cooking for 74 hours. Man, that's a long time. Sabbath mode um, has to be activated in the basic setting to use the mode. All right, so... Sabbath mode. So we're, you know, just going down into this appliance, man. Um, understand how to do it. And this is the rack position that we talked about earlier. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Best cooking results. So you want to check that out. Telescopic rack. We talked about that. So these are one of the accessories that you get. All right. So you'll be able to pull it out a little bit and it comes out more. Um, so that's a lot. And it goes in. You have your flat racks as well you got to be careful with these telescopic racks sometimes it can be difficult installing um or putting in to make sure that they're seated properly so you want to check that out um i normally in order to check it i pull against it like pulling it to see if it comes up or comes forward if the whole entire rack comes forward then of course it's not insert inserted properly all right we talked about the rotisserie you guys have seen that um as well so I'm just going to let this sit right here if you want to really just see what's going on with the rotisserie. Um, actually, we can talk about a couple of things. The maximum weight allowed to the rotisserie is 12 pounds. So you want to be um, uh, be mindful of that. Use a meat thermometer to check the internal temperature of the meat. Man, like I said, this feature is amazing. Not every, not, I haven't seen an oven with this feature in there. Uh, and this is where you get with the high-end the high -end appliances. Um, it says um, this is your uh, the screwer rack into the oven and insert the drive shaft into the opening on the back oven wall. If necessary, turn the, the, the rotisserie skewer slightly so that the drive shaft fits properly into the opening. All right, so you just want to make sure that's in there properly, it fits properly, and it rotates. So yeah, you got to make sure that you insert this thing properly so that it doesn't fall and that it rotates. All right, so this is where the owner's manual comes in, showing you how to really stick it in the meat and how to connect it. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Um, cooking charts for rotisserie, all that good old stuff. So it's teaching you all this stuff as well. Different charts inside the owner's manual. You can check that out. Um, this one doesn't have a warmer drawer, but if yours does, you have a warmer drawer operation, right? So you can be able to see that. Um, the only thing that I noticed that is missing, it doesn't give a lot of information on the steaming portion of it. Um, but like I said, we'll download the owner's manual if it's in there. Um, we talked about the home connect. Um, so yeah, man. So when you're talking about an appliance, remote start, show you how to really do those options and those features, man. Home connect, connecting that stuff, connecting it to Wi-Fi, all that good old stuff as well. Another thing, of course, be careful with the Wi-Fi. You want to make sure that you install it properly, right? That you're not having any issues with that. Right, so we're just gonna let this video rock and roll, man. You already know, man. I'm your boy Richie Rich at Consumer Plants Report. You already know, man. So we in the functions and the features portion of this video, man. I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, let us let us know. And we're gonna finish dissecting the rest of this appliance, man. You already know I'm your boy, Richie Rich, and I'm out. Peace. I can see the sky.